Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the yaw damper. Now the yaw damper is an interesting device that is present on all sorts of aircraft. Very small propeller driven aircraft that have yaw dampers. And of course, once you get to aircraft with swept back wings, yaw dampers are basically required. But what actually is it? It's actually a neat device that in the early, early days of jet aviation, one of the common problems that they would face is something called inertia coupling. You know, what would happen is uh, you go ahead and um, go ahead tip your aileron to the right and your aircraft would actually go like this a little bit when you did it. So then I tipped it back to this way and then it would do that. And then you get this sort of a motion going on inside of your aircraft. Now, if you didn't check this with your like a Boeing 707 or your DC-8 of the day, um, this could get kind of interesting for your passengers and it actually gets progressively worse as you can see exactly. Now, of course, uh, this is the point time when the test pilot came out of the passenger section and said, give me that and was able to immediately snap it out of there. Now, remember, in the early days, everything was a straight-winged aircraft. You know, you didn't have a lot of you know, things to worry about, but you had a new generation of pilots who basically had to figure out how to operate these things. So one of the things they did is they developed a device that actually is a gyro that measures the current yaw rate and will actually take over your tail to go ahead and issue a situation where it will actually cancel out whatever you're inputting it to basically stabilize that back-and-forth motion that you get. Now, me sitting here flying around in a nice, relaxing situation, um, we're not going to have much issues with adverse yaw, uh, so much so that if I actually came down here and I flip the sucker on, you're going to notice absolutely no difference in my flight whatsoever. Now, if you remember ago, I was intentionally causing all sorts of shenanigans. So to give you an idea of how strong the yaw damper actually is, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this thing going real good here. Oh, yeah, let's make this thing a boat. Make this thing a boat. Oh, yeah, let's, let's get sick. Come on, passengers. Let's see it happen. Let go of the rudder. And you can see the way that it dampens itself out. Now let's go ahead and uh, flip the yaw damper on here and I'll uh, go ahead and uh, do the same sort of thing. Get it uh, going pretty good here. Notice, by the way, your muscle is stronger than the yaw damper. Uh, that's generally the rule. I'm gonna let go. Notice it stopped immediately because of that program that was able to catch it and actually give you a smoother ride. Now that yaw damper really, really pays for itself when you are in turbulent conditions. So if I actually come down here, you can see uh, that's nothing. Come on, I said it's a Connecticut weather here. Let, let me earn it. Let me earn it. Uh, let's see here. We'll make it in a random direction. Oh, yeah. Let's let's make this painful here. Oh, yeah. That's good. Too bad there's no turbulence component here because uh, there really should. Let's make it like... Uh, I don't know why they feel the need to change this all the time. Like, it just... I just don't get it. Like, guys, it's fine. All right. So that's uh, gusting 11. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's nice. Oh, yeah. Feel the pain. I'm not sped up or anything right now. It certainly looks like it, though, if you kind of look at it. Woo, that is, um, woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. I'm literally not touching anything, I swear, and I, my time is not sped up. So let's go ahead and shut the yaw damper off. This is with the yaw damper on, by the way. I can't even push the button. Dude, let, my guy, my guy. Sometimes uh, you have an issue, you can always zoom in, you can push that. So let's go ahead and shut that sucker off, and you'll notice that, oh my gosh, oh, key dokey then. Oh boy, gonna puke, gonna puke. Oh boy, oh boy, oh dear boy, let's see if we can zoom in a little bit. So let's go ahead and uh, turn that sucker back on. And you'll notice that um, although it doesn't prevent the initial, that little dampening component, like especially when I'm looking there, right there, is actually not terrible. Man, this is a ridiculous. This is a, what is this? 20 knots? Oh, come on, man. That is never that bad. Now watch what happens if I try to take a corner in this extreme turbulence here. <laughs> oh, man, this is not even extreme. This is 14 knots. This is routine. Now notice, of course, as we get away from uh, cutting across it there, the uh, weather vane effect is significantly reduced. Let's go ahead and uh, flip the yaw damper back off and uh, continue our turn. Now notice here how it's starting to unstabilize itself or destabilize itself again, again making it very, very challenging. So the yaw damper, of course, in order for it to work, it's going to need electrical power. And in some aircraft, it's also going to require, oh, okay, this is going to make me puke. Uh, it also, of course, is going to require some kind of hydraulic pressure in order to operate correctly. Oh my gosh, what the heck? Uh, clear skies. <sighs> much better. The one thing that you have to keep in mind with the yaw damper, though, is it runs the risk of putting you in a dangerous situation when you're in, in some kind of slow flight situation. Now, when are we in slow flight with an aircraft? Yeah, you're correct. Uh, that's when we're approaching for a landing. So one of the things you have to keep in mind is many, many checklists, with the exception of airliners, of course, they're their own beasts in that regard, will actually ask you to disable the yaw damper prior to landing because it, you run the risk of if something goes wrong, especially if you're in a twinge and plane and it destabilizes things, it becomes very, very difficult to control the aircraft on an actual approach. Some aircraft actually go so far as to basically yell at you if you have the yaw damper engaged and you pull the throttle all the way back. 
Now, some of you, of course, are saying, okay, that sounds pretty useful. That sounds like something you basically, you always want to have. Is there any other time when you don't want to have it? Well, you don't want to have it when it breaks. And a lot of times aircraft will, uh, you'll have some kind of mechanical failure, that gyro that's responsible for identifying, you know, how much motion that you have for your particular flight. For whatever reason, it fails. And it, stuff just breaks on planes. I'm not going to lie. You could have a perfectly maintained plane and something stupid will just not work anymore. It's, it's just what, it's a cup holder, you know, it just, it breaks. It's just what they do. But uh, the key thing there is uh, recognizing that it is failing. It's uh, not necessarily that it's, you know, not damping. You might not notice that if it's not heavily turbulent. But the moment you go ahead and apply some kind of strong rudder correction, you know, if you do one of these kind of things real fast, all of a sudden the yaw damper could push with your rudder and then you find yourself in a spin condition. Again, I don't know why you'd be so rough with your controls, but that's another reason why during the most critical phase of flight, putting the plane down on the ground, a lot of times they recommend you disable that. Other than that, enjoy.